Well, hello everyone, and this is Gabrielle here on Baseball Queen Radio. Today is February 28th, and I am so happy about the positive comments about my first episode. So thank you guys. Thank you for everyone who has given me positive comments and everything. Um, and especially the critiques, I definitely will take those into consideration. Now let's go ahead and get on with the second episode. This week has been a very interesting week because like I said last week, um, spring training did start for the 2019 season, which I am super happy about, super excited. As I tell everyone, I don't have a life when it's off season during baseball. So when it's on, when it's season again for baseball, I just light up like a Christmas tree. So for this episode, we're going to be talking about the 100 top 100 list that MLB graciously gave us, um, number 80 through 61 players, current free agent news. I also want to talk about the Padres lineup with Manny Machado since he did sign that 10-year $300 million contract. And I also do want to talk about someone that is pretty special within the Toronto Blue Jays organization, which is Vlad Jr. And then I also do want to talk about the first week in spring training. So let's go ahead and get on um, with number 80 through 61. So number 80 is Mr. Steven Strasburg. He signed a seven-year, $175 million extension with the Nationals. He has spent two stents on the DL last year in 2018 with right shoulder inflammation. Number 79, which I think is, this player is very special to the Mets organization, is Mr. Noah Syndergaard. For his first spring training game against Justin Verlander and the Houston Astros, he reached 199 miles an hour um, in his spring debut. To me, that is completely special for a pitcher to get to that level of pitching. Um, another thing is that he is currently working on pitching strategies to keep him healthy. Number 78 is Mr. Patrick Corbin. He is an NL All-Star for the 2018 season. He also was an NL Player of the Week on f- April 22. And he went two scoreless innings in his spring debut, and he was just traded from Washington to Arizona. So that is a definitely special thing that Arizona does have um, with Mr. Corbin, especially going two scoreless innings in his spring debut. Number 77 is Mr. Jose Abreu. He was an AL All-Star in 2018, and he is also a Silver Slugger Award winner for AL in 2018. He was rated number 10 for the first baseman um, list. Number 76 is Marcel Ozuna. I think Marcel Ozuna is also another special player. Um, He definitely brings a lot of key components to the St. Cardinal, to the Cardinals organization. Um, He was named NL Player of the Week um, in June of, of the 17th. And he was named number seven left fielder. Um, I personally would think that he would be at least in the top five for a left fielder, um, especially what he has to bring to the plate. Um, he what he did have a batting average of a two eighty last year, and his career average is a two seventy seven. Number seventy five is Michael Brantley. He was an AL All Star last year. He was also voted as the MLB Player's Choice AL Comeback Player of the Year. And he was signed from Houston to Cleveland this year. Number 74 is Mr. Nelson Cruz. He is he was an AL All-Star last year in 2018. And he signed with Minnesota from Seattle this year. I think that it was very interesting that Seattle was able to or not able, but they actually traded him over to Minnesota. So I just think that was very interesting that they were not able to um, keep him in their rotation, especially for, for their batting. Okay. So going on, number 73, Aroldis Chapman. He was ranked number eight as a relief pitcher. He was also named 2018 All-Star. 
Um, now, MLB did come out with a list of top 12 pitchers that are Cuban-born. And he did, he was named the 12th best Cuban-born player. Um, I would definitely have to agree to that. And especially with a 2.45 ERA this past season and a 2.24 ERA for his MLB career. I think that the Yankees do have something special with Aroldis Chapman and especially with those low ERAs like that. Number 72 is going to be Blake Trenton. He was named AL All-Star of 2018 and he was twice elected AL Reliever of the Month in May and September. Number 71 is going to be Zach Grinke. He was NL All-Star of 2018. He received a Rawlings NL Gold Glove in 2018. He was also named Wilson's Defensive Player of the Year. Um, there was definitely one thing that I researched and I found out. Um, they are currently looking... Uh, the Diamondbacks are currently look, looking for a catcher that would best suit for Zach Greinke. Um, and they did have a player by the name of Kelly. He did um, catch for him for the first time. So we'll see if that's going to be a good pair for them within the 2019 season. Number 70 is Schooner Jarnett, or Gannett, or however you say it. Um, it, he was named NL All-Star of 2018, NL Player of the Month in May. He was also named NL Player of the Week in the 13th of May as well as the 27th. He received the MLBPAA Red Heart and Hustle Award. And he also avoided um, arbitration with the Reds. Um, he did sign a one-year $9.775 million contract with the Reds for this season. Okay, so number 69 is Glaber Torres. He it was named AL All-Star of 2018. He was named AL Rookie of the Month in May. He was also named Player of the Week on the 27th of May as well as the 2nd of September. I believe um, that Gleyber Torres had an amazing rookie season, especially coming um, from the Yankees farm system. He had a 271 batting average, um, which is absolutely amazing for your first season just coming up. Um, it was just a great transition for the Yankees to pick him up through their farm system. And especially since they want to start something new with trying to have younger players, not just having the older players like it used to be back in the day. Number 68 is Aaron Hicks. Um, he did just sign a seven-year, $70 million contract extension with the Yankees. He was nearly a... Nearly a top prospect bust, and now he just signed this contract extension. So I definitely think that the Yankees do see something special um, in Mr. Hicks. Um, he did have a 24, uh, 2.48 um, ERA this past year, um, and his career lifetime is a 2.36. Number 67 is Mr. Justin Upton. Um, I have not... Um, I've always liked Justin Upton since he's played for the Atlanta Braves when him and BJ used to play together, him and his brother. Um, he is currently out of the, the season with tendonitis. He is expected to be ready by opening day, so he is not playing during this spring. Number 66 is Carlo Carrasco. Um, he was ranked number 9 as a starting pitcher. Number 65 is Walker Bueller. Walker Bueller is um, was named Baseball America Major All Star Rookie of the Year. Um, the Dodgers did report that they are starting him slow due to the past injury in the 2018 season. Number 64 is Kyle Friedland. He is currently competing to become the Rockies' ace, which the Rockies do have three other, two other contenders, not including him, to become their ace. Okay, 
Number 63 is going to be Max Muncy. He did participate in the Home Run Derby last year, and he was ranked number four on the first baseman. Number 62 is Jesus Aguilar. He was ranked number eight for the first baseman. Um, he was an NL All-Star last year, and he also did the Home Run Derby last year in 2018, and the Brewers did um, award him of the Good Guy Award. Um, and number 61 is Josh Donaldson. I think that everybody was so surprised when the Braves signed him from free agency. Everybody sees Josh Donaldson as a Toronto Blue Jay, which I personally do. Um, now, they are saying that if he could stay healthy, it could be a great force for the Braves. Um, so let's see how Josh Donaldson will be doing this season. Okay, so now I want to talk about current free agency. As everybody knows right now, Bryce Harper is one of the stars that are currently that is currently still on the free agent market. As of right now, there are reports that there are three different clubs that are currently looking at him. Um, the Dodgers did show interest for him, which was very surprising to me. Um, another club that is showing interest is the Cincinnati Reds. As well as the, as well as the San Francisco Giants. So we'll see within the upcoming week where he's going to be signed. Um, I'm I'm hoping we are all hoping within the baseball world that he will, um, be signed by this week because we need Bryce Harper to be playing. Another thing of news that I want to definitely talk about is Nolan Arenado. Um, he did sign a contract extension with Colorado. It is worth for eight years, $260 million. He does have an option to opt out after the third season, and he does have a full no-trade clause. Um, me, I definitely think that this was definitely a smart move for Colorado to sign that eight-year extension with Nolan. Um, it was... I feel like Nolan is a great key component for Colorado. Um, even though people don't really talk about Nolan and his um, great expectancy that the team does have, especially since Colorado is a low-budget team. Another thing that I definitely do want to talk about is that the Cardinals did sign Matt Wieters to a minor league contract, and the Indians did sign Hentley Ramirez to a minor league contract. So now the one thing that I definitely want to talk about is the Padres lineup with Manny Machado. Personally, I think that um, the issue at hand is going to be that Yes, Manny Machado signed this huge deal, 10 years, $300 million with the Padres. But I feel like that's going to start trickling down and going away. Like, everybody's just going to start forgetting. Because um, Eric Hosmer did sign with the Padres last year. And yeah, they were talking about it. It was like a huge deal going from Kansas City to the Padres. And now it's like you don't hear about Eric Hosmer anymore. So do you think that this is going to happen to Machado as well? Like, oh, it's just going to be swept under the rug. You know, low budget team signed a big contract for this player that was on free agency. So I want to hear from you guys. Let me know. Instagram. Uh, SoundCloud. And YouTube. Do you guys think that this could happen to Manny Machado? That all of a sudden he's just going to disappear into the, um, into the dust? I don't know. As of right now, the opening day lineup is going to be Manuel Margo. Which he is a center field with a 2.45. 2.45 e on bait, or excuse me, <laughs> batting average. I also have, um, second is going to be Manny Machado, which he will be playing third base with a 2.40, or 2.97 batting average. Then there's Eric Hosmer, which plays first base with a 2.53 average. Then Will Myers, left field, 2.53 as well. Then Hunter Renfro, right field, 248. 
Ian Kessler, which is playing second base with a 240. Luis Urias, which is shortstop with a 208, as well as Austin Hedges, catcher with a 231. So let's see what the Padres have up their sleeves for this year. Now, the one person, the one thing that I do want to um, put our minds and everything to is Vladimir Guerrero Jr. Um, I think he is an absolute amazing player. He has, he has received 15 different awards last year through the minor league system, which some of it is absolutely amazing. He was a rising star. He was named player of the week four times. Even Baseball America named him minor league player of the year. I think he would be amazing if they would have brought him up into the majors for this season. Um, especially since he has gone through basically the minor league system within the full year. He, rookie year, he had three games, nine at-bats, one strikeout. His batting average was a three thirty three, and his on-base percentage was a four hundred. Um, in... Level A advance, he was only at one game, had four at-bats, no strikeouts, a 500 on average, and a 500 on base percentage because he only played that one game with them. Then he was moved up to double A, which he had played 61 games, 234 at-bats, 27 strikeouts, a 402 batting average, and a 449 on base percentage. And Triple A, he played 30 games, 110 at bats, 10 strikeouts, a 336 average, and a 414 on base percentage. Now, with his career just last year, he played 276 games, 1,030 at bats, 135 strikeouts, a 331 average, and a 414 on base percentage. To me, that is amazing. If the Red Sox could have somebody like that on their team, I would absolutely love it. But I think that Toronto definitely has a gold mine with this player, and especially with having him in their farm system. So now we're going to talk about last week. So this past week, as everybody knows, um, spring training did start. Spring games have started. Um, I definitely do feel bad for the people that I work with because I'm listening to the games and I'm getting frustrated at my desk. So, shout out to the people that I work with. I am so sorry. (laughs) So, let's go ahead and um, let's talk about the current standings um, for the Grapefruit League. Um, Minnesota is sitting at four wins and two losses. Atlanta is sitting at three wins and two losses. Baltimore is sitting at three wins and two losses. Detroit is sitting at three wins and two losses. Philadelphia is sitting at three wins and two losses. Pittsburgh is sitting at three wins and two losses. Washington is sitting at three wins and two losses. The Yankees are sitting at two wins and two losses. St. Louis is sitting at two wins and two losses. Boston is sitting at two wins and three losses. Houston is sitting at two wins and three losses. Miami is sitting at three wins and two losses. The Mets are sitting at two wins and three losses. Tampa is sitting at two wins and four losses. And Toronto is sitting at one win with three losses. And going around the Cactus lead, the LA Dodgers are sitting at four wins and one loss. Arizona with three wins and one loss. San Diego with three wins and one loss. The Cubs are sitting at four wins and two losses. The Angels are sitting at four wins and two losses. Cleveland is sitting at three wins and two losses. Seattle is sitting at with three wins and two losses. Kansas City is sitting at three wins and three losses. Cincinnati is sitting at two wins and two losses. San Francisco is sitting at two wins and two losses. Colorado is sitting at two wins and three losses. Texas is sitting at one wins and three losses. The White Sox are sitting at one win and four losses. Milwaukee is sitting at one win and four losses. And Oakland is sitting at one win and five losses. So today, Thursday, February 28th, um, there are games. So there are 16 games that are currently going on today. Um, the Nationals will be at the Red Sox, and that game starts at 105. Every game is um, at Eastern Standard Time. 
The Tigers are at the Braves at 105, Pirates at Yankees at 105, Marlins at Astros 105, Mets at Cardinals at 105, Orioles at Phillies at 105, and Phillies at Blue Jays at 107 because the Phillies are doing a split squad game today. The Brewers at the Reds, 305. Padres at Royals at 305. Athletics at Cubs, 305. Rockies at Dodgers at 305. Giants at Brewers at 305. Rangers at Angels at 310. The White Sox at the Mariners at 310. The Indians at the Diamondbacks, 310. And then the Twins at the Rays at 635. So that is definitely a packed day with 16 games that are being played. And like I want to remind you, um, our question of the week, do you guys think that Manny Machado will be thought of less or spoken less due to the type of team that he has signed with? And always, I would love to leave you guys with a quote for the week, and it is, you can't steal second base And keep one foot on first from Reggie Jackson. Well, that is the end of my podcast. And thank you so much for listening for my listeners that listened first week as well as listening for the second week. I am definitely loving all the positive comments as well as the critiquements that I definitely need to do. And as I always say, peace, love, and baseball. And have a wonderful day and happy spring.